Hello and welcome to Just Jets episode number 163. What is going on? I am Matt O'Leary hanging with you today and we want to talk about uh, former GM of actually this team, spoiler alert, who wants the New York Jets to draft an uh, quarterback. Okay, sure. We also want to get into the schedule. And I'll explain why I want to bring it up in a little bit. But before that, and we'll get into the voicemails, we got to do a word from our sponsors over at Manscaped. Now has Beard Products, baby. The brand new Weed Whacker 2.0. Go ahead and tell the world the leaders in Below the Waist Grooming are traveling north of your South Pole with the revolutionary grooming pro with their revolutionary grooming products the new weed whacker 2.0 and their new beard line confirms they have all the best tools for your hygiene toolbox get 20 percent off with my code jets 20 that is j-e-t-s-2-0 for 20 percent off and free shipping make sure to pick yourself up something nice over there at manscaped all right let's hop into it so we hinted at it mike tannenbaum Remember him? He was the Jets general manager for how long? Six years? Seven years? Something like that? Mike Tannenbaum. Let's find out actually how long he was the Jets general manager for. It was a pretty, it was a pretty nice chunk of time. Uh, 2006 through 2012. Six years. He was the director of player contracts from 1997 to 2000 under Bill Parcells. Uh, and then he became director of pro player development in 2000, 01 to 05. It was assistant general manager and director of pro personnel. Uh, but really, he comes from an accounting background. He's a math guy. He's a cap guy. But he also has some takes about the quarterback position. And one of those is not only should the Jets trade for Aaron Rodgers, which is something that you know eventually is going to come down the pike unless you are uh, Craig Carton and think otherwise and think he's going to the San Francisco 49ers for some reason, which I don't buy for half a second. But let's dissect the thought process here from Mike Tannenbaum, who not only wants the Jets to trade for Aaron Rodgers, but also wants the Jets to draft a quarterback at number 13. So uh, I, I think Mike Tannenbaum went to the same school of thought as Max from Homedale, New Jersey last week, which is, we'll, we'll reiterate a little bit at the start here before we get into topic number two today. I, why? Did you not learn anything from the Green Bay Packers? If there's one thing you want to do to maybe not piss off the Hall of Fame quarterback is to use a first round pick to draft the guy who want, is going to eventually replace him. And I know down the line, the Jets very well could have to find a replacement for, for Rodgers through the NFL draft. That's something that is realistically on the table. But you know what else is on the table? A one, maybe to your window of a championship window. And a quarterback at 13 is not going to help you compete for a championship over the next year or so. So I don't know why Mike Tannenbaum, or anyone for that matter, would think, hey, you know what? Good idea. Let's hedge our Aaron Rodgers bet and also draft a guy at 13. Which, who are you drafting? This is the same guy who had Hendon Hooker in the top five of his draft. His mock draft, his first five picks of the drafts, all quarterbacks, including at number five, Endon Hooker. Who's going to be there at 13 for you to pull the trigger on? Don't tell me Anthony Richardson. He's going in the top 10. Will Levis maybe fall in? Great. Fantastic. You want to draft Will Levis? I don't, and I think he's going to go early. I think all four of the guys who can really be first rounders and maybe have a chance are going to go in the top 10. That's how it works. And the Jets aren't going to trade up. They're not going to have the ammo to trade up. And then why are you trading up for a quarterback when you have Aaron Rodgers and when you can use that pick on the offensive line, the defensive line, wide receiver room, linebacker safety, wherever you want to put that pick. You could debate. We could debate until the cows come home where the Jets should actually 
utilize that pick and what they should actually do with it. I am team offensive tackle at pick 13. But the moral of the story is you got to do something to help you out right now. Who cares about two or three years down the line? That's not what you're worried about. You have to put all your eggs in the basket to go for it and to try to win now, immediately. You can't go one foot in, one foot out. It doesn't work. It doesn't work that way. And, you know, we've seen, I guess, examples of of teams do similar things. But, like, are you going to give me the Kansas City Chiefs with Patrick Mahomes? They were they thought themselves that they were a quarterback away from being a legit, legit contender. And they saw someone that they absolutely loved, but they already had a great roster and were already a playoff team. The Jets need another draft class to put the rest of the roster over the top. They don't have that luxury of saying, hey, let's use pick 13 on a guy that's not going to have any sort of impact on our win and loss record on 2023. Back in 2017, the Chiefs did have that luxury. They were a good team. They might even went to the AFC Championship game in 2017. I don't remember off the top of my head. Obviously, we know that uh, the New England Patriots ended up winning, but I can't remember who they beat in the AFC Championship game that year. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. The moral of the story is you can't just take a guy and, and then have him sit when you're in this go for it window and you have holes on the interior of the defensive line, you have holes at the tackle or not really holes, but massive question marks at the offensive tackle spot wide receiver room. They could use another receiver. You rather get a weapon for Aaron Rodgers or hedge your bet with a replacement for Aaron Rodgers. You have your project quarterback with Zach right now. That, like now's not the time. If you want to talk about doing this in 24, maybe that's another conversation. But you can't right now. It doesn't make any sense. I don't know where Tannenbaum is coming with, uh, coming up with this stuff. I really don't. And he's not the only one to have this opinion, which is just, it's maddening. I don't know how we could like legitimately sit here and think like that is the best course of action that you need to not only trade for a quarterback, you also have to draft one and then sit him. Instead of getting a guy who can impact your roster. That's what I think Joe has to do in this draft class. I think he needs to focus on getting guys who can play and give you something right away. Not developmental picks. Not high variance picks the guys who could be absolute bums or be absolute studs. I'm okay with going on the, a lower ceiling for a higher floor this year, because you need guys who can immediately impact your team now. Anthony Richardson doesn't do that. Will Levis doesn't do that. Hendon hooker doesn't do that. And are you taking Hendon hooker at 13? That's a fireable offense. <laughs> If you're Joe Douglas and he stays there, I pick 13 and takes Hendon Hooker, that's a fireball offense. It's unreal. I, I, I don't know how that's a real opinion. And this guy had the keys to the franchise. And I guess we wonder why the roster went to crap after Eric Mangini left. Because the Tannenbaum and Rex duo, in terms of actually trying to draft and, and player evaluation and roster construction, not good. <laughs> not very good at all. 20... 10, 11, 12, well, really, I guess starting in 2009 with that draft class. Not a, not a whole lot went right from in the draft from uh, 2009 through uh, 2012. But 06, 07, 08, the roster decisions, the draft classes, that's what put the Jets in the spot to be competitive in 2009 and 2010. The, you know, the drafts two, three years prior. The second thing that I wanted to get into before taking a couple of calls here on this show is uh, an interesting discussion. It's not really like a, a pressing issue per se. Uh, it's more of just a discussion point that I've seen online. Uh, as you know, the springtime and around now is when you start, to, obviously the draft comes first, but you start to get the uh, the 
schedule predictions and what the schedule would look like. And I saw a question kind of going around on Twitter that I thought was worthwhile to bring up, which is who should the Jets open the season against? What should the first game in the season be for the New York Jets? If you're the schedule maker, who would you want it to be? And I saw, you know, a lot of varying opinions. Some were like, oh, give me a, a rivalry matchup. You know, give me Buffalo on Sunday night. Yeah. The New England. I don't know. New England's probably going to stink this year. Do you want to play New England? I haven't beaten New England in, in a decade, it feels like, but now would be a good time to, but that doesn't move the needle. Miami? Yeah. Not really. Dallas? They did that once in 2011. The Thanksgiving feels much more likely, and I, I don't love that. I'd rather them not play on Thanksgiving, which is going to be a hot take for some. Like, oh, give me all the prime time. I'm not a huge prime time guy, but ironically, here my answer for what I want or how I want the Jets to open their season is a prime time game, and I think in this instance it makes a ton of sense. And the specific instance that I'm talking about is a Monday night football matchup between the New York Jets and the New York Giants. And why I want to open the season against the New York Giants and why I specifically want it on Monday instead of Sunday. You guys know me. Sunday at 1 o'clock. That's my favorite time. But Monday night football, because that will be the anniversary of September 11th. 22 years. And I think it makes sense on that day to have the two New York teams go against each other. You know, that day obviously matters the most to our city because it happened here. It affected the entire country. But, you know, if you grew up in New York or New Jersey, I'm sure you know people who were affected by September 11th whether it's in your your own life, in your family, or you just knew someone in school who had a, a relative lost, whether they're in the building or a fire or fire department, police, all that, but it affected us. So having the, the game between the Jets and the Giants, who are going to meet up in the regular season anyway, for the first time since 2019, I think it makes sense to open the season against the New York Giants. Jets, Giants, Monday night, new quarterback in town for the Jets on September 11th. You have FDNY out there, uh, NYPD, all the services, you know, uh, holding the, f the flag for the American, for the, the national anthem. Doesn't get better than that. Really doesn't. Last year, the home opener, the first game of the year against Baltimore was on uh, September 11th. It was a Sunday. Now this year it's on a Monday. And having it be with, with these two teams set to play each other this year makes a lot of sense to put that one together. Because sure, you could wait and do it another time, but Jets are probably going to have, what, maybe four primetime games, something like that. If there was ever time for one, I think it's like, I think it's now. I think it's the first week of the year. I think it's between the two New York teams on a day that matters so much to the city. That'd be really cool. That'd be a good way to honor the day, I think. So that'd be my choice. Well, I get like, yeah, it'd be cool, uh, cool I guess, to go against the New England uh, in prime time in week one and, you know, beat the bricks off them or Buffalo or Kansas City or, you know, name a, insert a, a big name team here. Jets, Giants, two teams, you know, Giants made the playoffs last year, two teams on the rise. That'd be a fun one. That, I think, would be my favorite way to do it. Without further ado, let's hop into those voicemails. First up, we're going to go out to Travis calling in from Ohio. Travis, welcome back on the show, buddy. Hey, Matt. Travis from Ohio. What's up, dude? Hey, buddy. Uh, what do you think about... Ken Baum, Trader Mike's uh, newest mock draft. He has five quarterbacks going ahead of our pick at number 13. Do you think, or what, I don't know, three or four players would you love to see slide to us at 13 if all five quarterbacks go? 
And would you rather have that pick at 13 or trade back if they don't go and somebody wants to come off and get one of those five quarterbacks? And what kind of haul do you think we could get for it? All right, brother. You know I love you. Go Jets. Thank you, man. Much uh, much appreciated here checking in. And uh, yeah, it's fitting, right? Because we talked about Mike Tannenbaum in the open. Uh, in this mock draft, the first, uh, I'll read off the first few picks. You have Bryce Young first overall, CJ Stroud second, Will Anderson third, Will Levis four, Hendon Hooker five. And then the next quarterback taken is Anthony Richardson, who is the fifth quarterback off the board to the Tennessee Titans at pick number 11. I don't think he makes it there. I guess I understand where you're coming from, right? Is you're saying like, hey, all these quarterbacks are coming off the board. Can the Jets move back? And you know what? What can they possibly get? Now, I don't think 13 is a really an ideal spot for someone to trade up for a quarterback. But can the Jets move back a few spots and grab someone who could be a really damn good player at another position? Yeah. If here's a trade back scenario for you that I would be interested in. If the top three tackles in Broderick, in no particular order, by the way, Broderick Jones, Paris Johnson, uh, who was, by the way, the pick in, at number 13 in this mock draft was Paris Johnson Jr. and Peter Skaronsky. If one, if none of those tackles are there and you move back and you grab, I don't know, Kalaja Kansi, let's say a few picks back, I'm for that. Absolutely. Now, what would it take? To move back, I guess it depends on how far you go back. You might just be picking up another because the Jets pick number 13, according to the draft tech. Here, let's do this. The the draft tech value chart is 1,150 points. So if you're, I don't know, pick a team, Pittsburgh and you have pick 18, would you as the Jets move back five spots to land? 32 is going to be too high. But what about what pick did they have with their own? Uh, is four, pick 49? So you'd get a, an additional second round pick maybe to move back four spots? That's interesting. If you want to move back... I don't know. Let's say the Giants at 25. That's 720. Did the Giants have a second round pick this year? They they do. That might take an additional for like next year's first to move up that much from 13 to 25. That's a 12 spot difference. If not, then it would probably be pick 25, 57, and I don't know, an additional mid round pick next year, something like that. So to move back four or five spots, you're probably just going to get that second round pick. To move back 10 plus, you're probably getting that, uh, that second round pick and then something else next year. I don't think it's going to be some crazy haul 13, like roughly the middle of the draft. Isn't really a great spot to be. If it was, I don't know, pick four or pick three, like Arizona's in a really good spot because they're more than likely not going to take a quarterback. You can trade back and get a haul there from pick three, but from the rest of it, from or from 13 don't know i don't think that's the best of spots thank you again to travis for calling in let's go to constantine from pa wants to talk about aaron Rodgers, odell beckham and the jet ceiling okay cool let's do it hey matt this is constantine from pa what's up dude just wanted to chime in my thoughts on where we're at right now please um as far as what i've been hearing there's some kind of a swap that's being mentioned about the 15th pick in the first round to be swapped with our 13th pick. Okay. Uh, later pick in the draft of this year, in the second round of next year. If that's the case, let's just get it done already. I agree with okay? that, by the way. The bottom line is 
we've been a mediocre to a horrible, horrible organization for years and years and years. We finally have a chance to shine. We finally have a chance to compete for a Super Bowl. Let's just get it done. What's this all this back and forth bullshit? Let's get this deal done. Let's get Aaron Rodgers in our facility, learning our plays, working with the receivers, and getting this team built the right way so we can compete next year, enjoy the year like we did this past year. Outside of the quarterback play, we were solid. I'm sure you'll agree with me on that. Yes. But the bottom line is we need to get this deal done. Enough of this back-and-forth bullshit. Now, as far as Odell Beckham Jr., is he a great talent? Yes, he is. Is he a great receiver? He is. But do we run the risk of bringing him in our locker room and having a situation like maybe with what happened with Kyrie Irving in the Nets? I don't know. You know, he could be a bit unstable at times. What if uh, Garrett Wilson's getting the ball more than he is and they're starting to bicker? We don't need that kind of negative vibe in our locker room. So I just want your thoughts on that. Do we really need an OBJ if we have an Aaron Rodgers? Because our receiving cores looked a lot better this year, upcoming, than it did last. And I think we can get the job done with the guys we have. Now, as far as the defense is concerned, I'm not concerned about it. The defense is going to be just fine. Our offense steps up, our quarterback play improves. We're definitely going to be contenders. Now, of course, we got to give the Chiefs the number one spot. They deserve it. They're the champs. But we're going to be right there at number two. Tell me what you think. Love talking to you. Think you're a terrific, terrific person. Thank you to be covering the Jets the way you do. Love you, and as always, J T T S Jets, 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 go! Love it, baby. Love it. Right in at the buzzer too, at the two fifty nine mark. Thank you. I appreciate it, Constantine. Thank you for the kind words. Uh, I I want Aaron Rodgers here at ASAP. Get that done as soon as possible. With a trade that makes sense. There was one also from um, Peter Schrager, who is back on the NFL Network as of today. Uh, the trade was as follows. And this, I think, makes a ton of sense. Here we go. <clears throat> Jets receive Aaron Rodgers. The Packers receive pick 42 and a fourth round pick. So this year's second and fourth round pick, which is 42 and 112. And a 2025 conditional second round pick. 2025 second rounder becomes a first if Rodgers plays eight plus games in 23 and 24. Perfectly fine. Yep. If that's if that's what it would take, yep, I would do that in a second. Absolutely. Sure. Because you're losing your second and your fourth this year, which, all right. Then maybe that pick 13 is a real uh, trade down scenario. But I'm not, not going to you know, cry over losing pick 112. And then you don't have to worry about compensation at all in 2024. You're really just getting down the line to 2025. And if it's a 2025 first round pick you give up, it's a 2025 first round pick you give up. Because at that point, how many swings in the first round would Joe Douglas have had by the time you get to 2025? That would be one in 2024, assuming that's not traded. One in 2023. You had three in 2022. So that's five. You had two in 2021, that's seven. And then you had one in 2020. So that you would have eight first round swings by that point. If you could ever afford to maybe not take a swing in the first round, that would be the time. And you're hoping that it's pick 31, 32, whatever at that point. You worry about it then. But I, I'm, I'm with you. I would do that. I'd do that in a second. I would love for that to get done in a second. Odell, look, I'm not the biggest Odell fan. I'm going to be honest with you. I think it's a massive risk bringing him in, especially at the $15 million a year asking price that he's at right now. When he played zero games last year, none. And in 2020, he played seven because he also tore his ACL in 2020. That's two ACLs in the last three years. 
that there, there's risk involved. It's not, you know, 2015 anymore. He was a, his first three years in the league was a phenomenal receiver. And then he played four games in 2017, got hurt, came back to the Giants in 2018, was really good again, had just over 1,000 yards in 12 games, but he missed time that year too. Got straight into Cleveland, puts up 1,000 yards with Baker. Uh, things go off the rails in uh, 20, uh, 2020 and 2021. He gets traded to the Rams and 305 yards and five touchdowns in eight games and then was good in the playoffs as well. I just, I don't love that risk. I'm going to be honest with you. I really don't. I'd rather if DeAndre Hopkins gets released, that's the route that I would rather go if we're being completely honest with ourselves here. I'd much prefer going that route than uh, signing up for Odell Beckham, which you don't know you're going to get. And like, yeah, there is some red flags with the with the personality. On the field when he's healthy, can still be a functioning receiver, but I have no idea what he is at this point in his career. None, because he didn't play at all last year. And he was hurt the two years prior. So it's a gamble. Uh, one that I, I would like another team to take that risk and not the Jets. Let's close out James from New Jersey. James, take us home, baby. Matt, what's going on, man? It's James from New Jersey. How are you, man? Good. Uh, I don't know where to begin. I haven't called you in so long. It's been such a busy off season and winter and now spring for me. Um, first of all, you know, glad to see you and Jake Asman working together on on a collab on his show. So kudos to you. Yes, uh, thank you, you know, calling in like as I promised, though. But uh, man, this, this off season is crazy. We need this Aaron Rodgers show to happen. That's all I'm going to talk about. It's been trending for all Jets YouTubers like yourself and the Jets fans. It's uh, you know, I only trust you guys though, because you know, you make you make Mike Greenberg look like an over the top Jets fan. He's just being spastic on get up and just yelling all over the place. So I don't know what's wrong. He's making Jets fans look bad. Like you're at a at a at a at a top stage and you're embarrassing those Jets fans because you're over the top about these rumors with other teams. But anyway, man, we're gonna be fun. We're gonna relax. R E L A X, like our future quarterbacks going to say. But um. You know, this is so Jets. Like, we can't even get a trade done. And it's just that. But it's going to get done. Joe Douglas is going to get it done. Because if it was any other general manager like, you know, uh, Isaac or McCagden or, I'm sorry, even a Mike Panabom, we would have botched this uh, trade already. We would have sold the darn form already. But we're going to be fine. So it's going to happen definitely by either draft or after draft. If it's after draft, more kudos to us. We'll have more picks for the 2023 season. But anyway, let me know what you think. Go Jets and... I'll try to think it's with your phone call, man. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you. Yes, thank you for checking in with us, James. Really appreciate it. It was great being on the show with Jake Asman uh, earlier in the week. Or was it at the end of last week? I don't know. The time's flying. Man. I guess it was at the end of last week. Time is absolutely flying by. But I I, I agree. We're That's what we're waiting on. And it, it feels like you're kind of just stuck in this no man's land waiting for something to happen with Aaron Rodgers. It really does. But at the end of the day here, I, I am confident that it gets done. I am extremely confident that it, that it's going to be able to get done here. Um, I don't buy that, you know, it's it's not going to get done. I don't think there's some mystery team, the 49ers. I don't see that. I don't see them getting in the mix. I don't see, you mentioned Tannenbaum again. It's funny. He kept coming up in this episode. A couple callers brought him up. We used him for the open. Don't think they're going to take a quarterback. I think Jet fans have more faith because of what Joe Douglas has done in the trade department for why this is going to be able to get done. And yeah, he's probably earned himself the benefit of the doubt there. Absolutely. So we'll see what happens. Again, I'm not overly concerned. I think it's going to be okay. We just have to sit patiently and and wait this one out. Uh, If you haven't seen, by the way, the NFL draft is coming up. That's been heavy conversations on these shows recently, but the draft coverage returns this year. For the Talking Jets panel over on Jets Talk 24-7, all three days, myself, Ryan, and Green Bean will be live. So make sure to tune in there. And we're going to have a ton of guests on. Every big YouTuber's name that you love, know and love, and you watch every day, they're going to be coming on with us. Some Twitter guys, uh, some bloggers, all that stuff. Going to get a whole bunch of guests on. It's going to be a lot of fun. Make sure to hang out with us there. Subscribe if you are new to the program. I appreciate it. I'm Matt O'Leary, and I'll catch you next time.